Hey guys, it's Jason with Stealthy SK, and at the time of this recording, it is now the second day of the league. I'm making this video to go over my thoughts on the Toxic Rain Ballista League start. This build is popularized by Palstron, so if you wanted to check out the build, you can go over there. But I will also be showing the tree and stuff in this build. You can start this build at level 12, which makes it a great league starter, um, so you don't have to redo your tree later on. I'd never learned to level it, so I wasn't sure how it was going to go. I'll be blunt. It felt awful. It had low damage, the arrows took forever to hit the ground. I was ready to quit to restart to a different build at the beginning, but I decided to move forward with it anyways. If I wasn't already leveling with someone, I probably would have restarted. After I got some attack speed, I started to like the build a bit more, but it still felt really sluggish. After fi finishing Act 2, the build started feeling much better. There's a few reasons to that, so I'll be showing you what those are. So by Act 2, there's a few nodes on the trees that can make this happen. First of all, you're going to get Avatar the Hunt Mastery, as well as the nodes up to it. This not only gives you phasing, so you can just straight up run through enemies, but also a ton of extra damage from the damage over the time and bow damage. If you take a look down towards more of the bottom tree, you also get Onslaught, which makes everything faster and saves a build in my opinion. It gives you 20% attack and move speed. I'll be honest, I didn't watch the video, I just looked at the POB, so I was really confused on why he was using Blink Arrow. It felt really slow and terrible to use. But moving on to Act 3, you gain the Blink Arrow Mastery, which makes your Blink Arrow twice as fast to recover, which feels great. You also get more bow damage and more accuracy. At this point, you're blazing past enemies, and it only gets better. Moving on to Act 4, we're going to start by getting some health nodes, which helps, but you should be killing enemies at this point with ease. But the main upgrade here is going to be the Totem slash Skills Mastery. As you can see here, you get placement speed as well as totem damage. Not only that, you can now place a secondary totem, which makes every pack very easy. And at this point, I was having fun enjoying the playstyle. But it still felt a little bit off and I didn't know why at this point. In Act 5, you get 30% chance to summon both the totems at once and some max health. And then you start heading up the tree for your next nodes. This is where you face Katava for the first time, so be aware that your resistances are going to be lowered by 30%. I recommend using Purity of Elements to circumvent that issue. Now that you're in Act 6, you gain extra life and extra flask life abilities. Anything related to flask didn't seem like that much to me, but with the new Massive Surgeon node in the Pathfinder Ascendancy, you'll be definitely seeing the difference. Moving up to the tree, you get a ton of skill effect duration, so your dots stay on the target for 55% longer, which is great. At this point, you should be pressing your blisters once and using Toxic Ring once on each pack, and they should die. So you never have to stop moving, which saves you time to get through the acts very quickly. In Act 7, you should be around level 55 to 50, and you're going to grab Centennial, which gives you a bunch of evasion rating and 10% to each of your elemental resistances. If you feel like you're dying constantly, it's probably because you're not at 75% resistances, which is very important in this game. It may not be intuitive, but having 75 res is imperative if you don't want to die a bunch. At this point, you start pathing down a tree to get what I consider is one of your best damage upgrades. This is going to be where you get your biggest totem upgrades. Your ballistas have HP and resistances. Their base resistance is 50%, so this node Ironwood that gives 30% caps out their res, which allows them to tank more damage and deal more damage to the enemies. Not to mention the life you get from this as well. With Pan Up, you also get one more totem, making it three at this point. And if you've placed three totems and held Toxic Rain on a boss, they absolutely melt and it feels great to play. We also get some life over time, which helps as well. For Act 9, you're just going to go up the tree a little bit and grab some reservation, which makes your mana feel much better. Act 10 is your next big upgrade. You're going to path up the tree until you get to Wasting, which gives you 10% Chaos damage over time and 17% Chaos resistance. Your main source of damage for this tree is Poison, which in this game is considered Chaos damage. So Chaos damage over time is an insane upgrade. The two small nodes next to Wasting also both give you Chaos damage over time, adding up to another 10%. Then you move to the right of the tree to get Revenge of the Hunted, which gives you life, evasion, and suppress, as well as more life and evasion in the small nodes. And like I said, damage over time is going to be your main upgrade, even if it's not Chaos, and you get a ton of it from this node right here, Hunter's Gambit. You get 10% Chaos damage over time, 10% skill effect duration, 
25% skill damage over time with both skills. And then you also get overtime skills as the small nodes. At this point, I would consider going to Blood Aqueduct and leveling to about 75 and then getting the rest of the nodes you need on the tree. I'll have a link down in the descriptions of each node you should be taking. Now I'm going to go over my progress and how far I've made it so far. At the beginning of this video, I mentioned that it felt kind of off. And I wasn't sure why he kept mentioning the Quill Rain bow as being a really good bow. Because I looked at the stats and it didn't seem that great. Until I realized one thing. This guild scales off projectile speed. I felt really dumb not knowing this. But getting the 100% extra projectile speed was a life changer. This takes this build from about a 4 to like an 8 in my opinion. After getting my bow, I went and got my chest plate with uh, just a 16th corrupted with the gem slots I needed. The stats on here are nothing special, just some res and some life and stuff. I just needed the skills. On the way through the axe, I picked up some gloves at attack speed. Um, so I just slapped on life and I moved on from there. My boots I also found while leveling. They had 30% move speed and res and life plus suppress. It felt like an amazing drop to me, so I definitely picked those up. For this unique bow, I found it in Act 9, I think. Um, it seems really good. I'm not sure how good it is comparatively to different um, quivers, but to me it feels really good, so I kept it for now. My helmet is definitely nothing special, 20% code res, but I did buy the next upgrade for me. This was my biggest purchase so far, but this is the Wilma's Recriddle, which will be my biggest upgrade but not for right now. The rest of my stuff I just upgraded, I got res on all of them. Res on this, res plus stats, and res plus stats, res plus stats, to balance out my reses, which I finally got to 75 on each of them, which is really good. Now, here comes the reason I'm upset with this build, and this is completely my fault. I didn't realize after you hit through the ax that you switch to a full ballista playstyle. So your playstyle is just running around placing ballistas down. And last league I played EA Blista and I absolutely hated it. So rather than using your skill toxic drain, it uses it for you. Now some people would find this playstyle very enjoyable, but to me, I'm not super into it. So I'm considering changing my league start, but I'm going to give it a try for a little bit longer. The things I need to work on, I really need to get spell suppression up to 100, which will be from the nodes. Um, some more evasion would definitely help. And then getting a 6 link Quill Rain, which is very expensive right now. It's about 60 chaos. After all that said and done, I need to fix my flasks. I need to get rid of the Bismuth Flask. I no longer need this. And besides that, I want to work on my Atlas tree, which I got um, to about tier 7s. I have a few tier 10s done, um, but those are from Kiarok, obviously. I should be able to finish my Atlas today. I am able to do tier 16 maps as long as I'm very careful. And what I'm stalling for, unfortunately, is changing over from the Toxic Rain style to the Toxic Rain Ballistas, where I just use Ballistas. They're much stronger, but they're much more boring to play, in my opinion. So that's pretty much been my League Star experience with this. It's gotten me through Axe very quickly. I'm using the Chaos Recipe to gather a ton of Chaos. Um, you gather so much over the maps without even noticing it. If you don't know what that is, I have a video, this last video I posted, checking it out. For now, that's all I have to talk about. If you got to the end of the video, if you can subscribe and like, I would really appreciate it. And stay tuned for the next couple of videos.